So if we're talking about community and culture, here in North Alabama, we can't do that without talking about outer space because Huntsville and all the areas surrounding Huntsville are really built on the fact that we sent people to the freaking moon. We even have a full-scale model of the Saturn V rocket standing out front in front of the United States Space the United States Space and Rocket Center. How cool is that? So, just as a starter to get ourselves thinking about community and culture and how it affects people's artwork, we're gonna draw a picture that reminds us of Huntsville's impact on the space program by drawing some rockets. You could either draw one big rocket in the middle or a couple of smaller rockets. You could turn your paper this way and have like a whole lineup of different rockets. It's totally up to you. I am gonna just draw one big rocket and because I love the fact that we sent people to the moon, I think that's an absolutely amazing thing that only happened because we had incredible people who were really dedicated and, and working hard together and synergizing to make it happen. So I'm gonna draw the moon in my picture and also because I am super excited about the prospect that probably within my lifetime, people will land on Mars, I'm also gonna put Mars in this picture. Even though like I know like if you were actually in a position in space where you could see the moon and Mars, like. Mars would be a tiny dot far away. Yeah, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm just gonna, you know, not worried about it looking realistic. I'm more stylizing it. So right in the center, that's where I'm gonna put the rocket. Now rockets come in different stages. So it, it'll be like the main stage at the bottom is gonna be wider and then the next stage up is gonna be a little narrower. So I don't wanna just draw a big rectangle. I have a ruler over here somewhere I can use it's stuck to the table, there we go. Uh, I can use this ruler if I need to. If you don't happen to have a ruler though, you could always just find something that's straight. It's not like I'm measuring. I mean, if I'm measuring, then I need the numbers on the ruler, but I'm not measuring. I'm just drawing straight lines. So I just need something, I just drew on that. I just need something straight. Um, so like I could, I could totally just, make a straight line, right? Just with the edge of something. It doesn't, you know, it could be a colored pencil box, a marker box, it could be like a folder, a binder, or something, whatever, it doesn't matter. Or it could be a ruler if you happen to have one. Um, so I'm gonna start with a mostly rectangular shape. And I might've made that taller than I really want. Uh, I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Um, and I want this to be actually not a rectangle. I want it to be a cylinder, a cylinder, because, you know, rockets are curved. So instead of just drawing a straight line across here, I'm gonna draw a curved line. I'm not drawing the whole oval like you would if like this was the top of a cylinder because there's gonna be another section above this. So uh, I'll hold off on that for now. And down here at the bottom, I'll draw the bottom of that cylinder as, you know, like half of an oval basically, just that curved line. I'll add the, the rocket fins and stuff, maybe some engines and stuff down at the bottom later. First I want to get the structure of my rocket. And I think the next step in that is going to be to angle in, usually when, you know, when you see rockets, they've got, for aerodynamic purposes, they've got, you know, little angled edges between the different sections. So I've got angled in and then a curve there. And then it's going to be straight up from here and straight up from here. And then at the tippy top, again, curve that to make it cylindrical. And then uh, it's gonna come to a point at the top. Now, you know, there are some rockets that have things at the top above that cone. Um, 
but we're not we're not going to get into like super detail here. We're just trying to get the basic structure, right? Uh, the fins, the rocket fins. Now they come in different shapes. Some of them are triangle. Some of them are trapezoidy kind of shapes. Uh, it, really, you know, you can make them how you want, whatever works best for you. Uh, what you need to keep in mind, though, is that there's like they, they go all the way around, right? They they won't like just be on the two sides. I mean, I guess there are some rockets that only have two fins. But aerodynamically, it's a lot easier to control the spin of a rocket when you have three or four fins. So what, what, we're, what I'm going to do is, uh, is actually make it have four fins. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that by having, I guess, the first fin come just straight off of the side over here. all the way to the bottom of the page. The second fin is going to be symmetrical, mirrored. So over here is where it's going to come out. It's going to come to here. How far out is that? I could measure to see, like, OK, yeah, that's good. And then, um, you know, but you just get it close enough, right? It doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical. Just get it close enough. All right, that's close enough, right? Maybe I made that one too big. Oh, well, whatever, whatever. Maybe I could fix it by bringing that in a little. I don't know, whatever. How am I going to put in numbers three and four? They're going to be, one of them is going to be on the other side. So I'm not even going to see it. And then the other one's going to be right here pointing towards me. How am I going to draw the fin if it's pointing towards me? Well, I'm going to see this is where the top of the fin is going to be. And it's going to just be like a really thin. like rectangly shape. It's pointed towards me, so I can't actually see like the side of it like I do here. Maybe I would see where there's like um like this would be the you know the the end the the end on view of this part and then like seeing the top of it would get like narrower as it gets away from me pointing into there. Try to give it a little bit three dimensionality, I guess, maybe. Does that make sense? Anyway, here we've got three of our four fins and uh, the fourth one is on the other side where we can't see it, so we're good to go. Now, Another thing to consider about rockets is what color? What color are rockets? Get black and white, right? Do they have to be black and white? Why are they black and white? Why didn't we paint the Saturn V rocket yellow? I mean, that is my favorite color. Why why is it why come to think of it, why isn't it just metal, right? Like, why isn't it just, like, silver looking because it's made out of, like, metal? Why did they even put paint on it to begin with? Well, it's interesting. Actually, they, uh, they first of all, they painted it white because white reflects all the sunlight. And uh, that helps keep it cool, right? Like, imagine you go outside on a summer day wearing a, a shirt that's, like, black, and it's going to be very hot, right? Then you go outside on that same day in a white shirt, and it's not going to be as hot, right? It might still be a hot day, but it's not going to be absorbing all of that sunlight and turning into heat. So that's why they painted rockets white. But if that's why they painted it white, then why did they paint certain parts of it black? Well, contrast is why. Um, they wanted to be able to see from the ground, maybe you know, using you know, binoculars or telescope type of things, but they wanted to be able to see. From a distance, when they look at the rocket, they wanted to be able to see, is it spinning? Or be able to see which side of the rocket am I looking at? Because you know, there's different 
equipment in different compartments of the rocket. And so they, they, you know, NASA, the people who launched the rockets, they wanted to know anytime they see the rocket, what part of the rocket am I looking at? Because, you know, they'd be radioed in to the astronauts and they might be able to say things like, uh, you need, you need to, to rotate, you know, you're, you're pointing the wrong way. And so, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have your little controls on the, um, you know, on the inside of the rocket. Well, how do you know which way to turn? If you don't know which way you're pointed, somebody on the ground would say, oh, you need to roll three degrees uh, to, to the left or 10 degrees to the right or whatever. Um, and so that's why there are specific patterns painted onto the rockets so that you can see from, any, from anywhere, from whichever direction you're looking at, you can see which side of the rocket you're looking at. And so those patterns are different on different sides. And so why black instead of some other color? Because black and white are opposites and they have huge amount of contrast, right? That makes it easier to see. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie for this. If you don't have a Sharpie, you could use a, a black marker or a black colored pencil. Marker would probably be quicker. Colored pencil is a tiny tip, so coloring things in with it would take a long time. I'm gonna use a Sharpie. And the first thing I wanna do is just get the outline, right? I just wanna, just wanna outline everything, trace all those, make sure I have the basic shapes in place. And now that I've traced all the outlines, I'm gonna erase any pencil lines that I still have left over. Now, if you've done this with colored pencils, you probably don't wanna do this step because it'll smudge and smear your colored pencils a little. And if you've done it with a Crayola marker, like a washable marker, then it might smudge and smear that too. But since I used a Sharpie, it's a permanent marker, I can go back and erase any of those pencil lines that are showing up and I'm good to start adding in those, uh, those patterns, those different details of the, the black uh, striping and the black boxes that you see on the sides of rockets. So maybe I'll start with the fins, right? And I'll say, right, maybe this fin is gonna have a black corner with a white stripe through that corner. And I'm taking my time to color that all the way in, darken that all the way in. I do want that high contrast between the black and the white. Right, and then I want the other fin to be different. I don't want it to be symmetrical. I wanna be able to see when I look at my rocket, which side is the, the left and the right and the, the, you know, front and the back, depending on, you know, you know what I mean. 
And so on this one, maybe what I'm going to do is the top of the fin. Maybe I'll, I'll darken in uh, the whole top, but with a white stripe through it. And that way, I can easily see the difference between the two fins from any distance. I mean, I could, be, I could be down on Earth and watching this thing fly through the sky, and I'd be able to see right away, oh, that fin is dark on the top. That fin is dark on the bottom, so I know which way I'm looking at this, right? That's, that right there is enough to give you all of that information unless the fins fall off, which, you know, in the early days of NASA, <laughs> you know, today they have like all these testing procedures and before a, a rocket is allowed to take off with people in it, they got to make darn tootin' sure that it's safe. But way back in the day, I mean, it was all brand new. They had no idea. They didn't even know how they would test it. Um, you know, there, there were certain types of tests they could do from the ground before they would send a rocket off into space, but for the most part, they didn't know when a person got into a, when an astronaut, trained astronaut, got into a rocket, they had no way of knowing whether they were going to survive the trip. They were risking their lives every time, and they still are risking their lives every time they get in, but back in the 60s, in the 1960s, when they were f first launching these rockets, yeah, like, it was chances were you probably weren't coming back. Now, thankfully, most of the astronauts did come back. In fact, uh, to this date, no astronaut from Earth has died in space. There have been a couple accidents on Earth with rockets, but so far, up to this date, no astronaut from Earth has died in space, which I think is amazing when you really think about the engineering and all the technology that goes into it. Anyway, um, for the design on my rocket, I'm just going to make some stripes and I'm going to make them different lengths and different thicknesses so that, again, that would be a pattern you could see, you could look at to see which side of the rocket you're looking at, which direction is it rolling, things like that. I'm going to turn my music on again while I, you know, get this... Uh, drawn out. You just have some fun with it and design your own rocket.
Well, that was a bunch of fun. One more point that I wanted to make about the reason why they did different kinds of patterns and things and why things are different heights and different lengths and things is they also used those black lines and shapes to tell what part, you know, like what part of the uh, fuel tank was like, let's say, oxygen down here and hydrogen up here for mixing for the fuel um, and things like that. And then like different pipes would be outlined so that they could see, like if there was something leaking, they'd be able to see, wait, is that fuel or is that oxygen or what is it that's leaking um, based on what, uh, you know, what the lines looked like and all of that. So there's, there's reasons for every little choice that they made when they made the rockets. And um, I think it's absolutely incredible just to know that people from round here, people from Podunk Nowhere in Alabama, built that and designed that. And it went to the freaking moon. Speaking of the moon. Speaking of the moon. I'm going to put the moon right here. I'm going to draw some craters. I'm not trying to draw every last detail, but you know, got the moon into my picture. And then Mars, Mars, I'm going to draw smaller and more distant. You know, like if, like I said before, like if I was actually looking from a perspective where the moon is that big, then Mars would actually be a tiny dot. But I want to actually be able to see Mars. And so I'm going to put that kind of over here, a little smaller. And just so that we can verify that it is Mars. I'm going to color it red because Mars is red. And, uh, you know, Mars is actually kind of a brownish red. Like it's like, it, like if you've seen photographs from the, um, you know, the different rovers that have landed on Mars and, and taken pictures of the surface of Mars. It kind of just looks like the deserts of Texas and California and out west. I mean, it just looks like a desert. Um, but it does have a slight orangey reddish tint to it. Uh, so I'm actually going to be mixing uh, some colors here together just because, you know, that's what I do. I like to go a little bit more involved with things. Uh, so I am going to mix in a little bit of orange into this as well, just because um, you don't have to, you know, you can get as crazy fancy as you want or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. In fact, you don't even necessarily have to draw Mars and the moon. I just wanted to do that because I really, you know, it's kind of my life goal to be the first art teacher on Mars. That's kind of my life goal. I really, like, how cool would that be to just be on another planet? And, and like, I just, that would be awesome. That's, that's, my, that's my dream, okay? Anyway, if you wanna, you know, like, add Earth at the bottom, add, you know, it's stars, whatever. If you want to darken up the sky, whatever. It's totally up to you where you go from here. I'm going to stop right there. And I don't know about you, but I think that was a super fun way to start talking about our community and our culture and things that are important to humans and, and why we make art that relates to things that are important to our community and our culture.